Well, hello, everybody. It's Brother Todd with your Victory Minute. I hope you guys had a good weekend. Hope you had a good time of worship and uh, uh, hope that uh, you got up going uh, this Monday. As I record this, I usually make all these in the morning time. I know y'all get them a little bit later. So I hope you've had a good Monday so far and I hope you have a great day. I was sitting out here reading this morning the uh, book of Amos over in the Old Testament. And uh, uh, Amos is very timely to a lot of the things that we're going through right now. And um, I, was, I was reading through and I hit a, a very familiar verse. Uh, it's one that's, that's well known from the book of Amos. He said there in, in chapter 8, Verse 11, he told, uh, Amos told him, said there's going to come a famine. And it's not a famine of, of bread or thirst. It's going to be a famine for the, the ability to be able to hear the word of God. Verse 12 says they're going to run all over the place, uh, the different directions and everything. And he just kind of says they're going to look to and fro for the word of the Lord, but they're not going to be able to find it. And the reality is, guys and gals, that's, pretty much the world we're living in right now that is gotten very deaf and the ability to hear uh seems to be waning at a at a rapid pace and these are all of course definite signs of the times and the end times as the bible talks about the truth is is there's always been a very few jesus said few go into eternal life and many don't and one of the big reasons for that is is when the word of god comes our way we reject it and we we fight against it. We don't listen to it. We don't pay any attention to it because a lot of times it tells us to go a different way other than the way we're wanting to go. Um, it's not that God is infringing on our free will. It's just he's letting us know you're using your free will and going the wrong way with it. And uh, and he doesn't want us to deal with the consequences of it. And there comes a time where, whether it's in a life or in a culture or a country or one day even, even the the world governments as we understand them and, and know them now are going to come to a time where the Lord says enough. You never want to catch yourself on the on the wrong end of God saying, well, that's enough or that's the last opportunity. You know, to one church, and not just to the lost world, to the church, Jesus said there at Laodicea, and I mentioned this in the weekend sermon if you hadn't got to hear it yet. He said, behold, I stand at the door and knock. Now, me and you both have stood at doors and knocked. And we may really want to talk to whoever's inside, and we may be persistent. We may knock there a few times. But you know what we do sooner or later? We turn and walk away. And uh, because if, if you're not, we're not just going to barge in. We can't make somebody meet with us. And God's not going to make us, you, me, the world, meet with him. It doesn't change his position. It doesn't change the reality of what we need. We have to remember that God is very merciful and gracious. And, you know, if you go back a chapter in, in Amos, you'll see that there were, there were judgments that the Lord told uh, Amos he was going to bring. One was a judgment of locust, another of fire. And both times, oh, Amos got in there and he prayed and he told the Lord, he said, you know, Israel's so small, Lord, we won't be able to endure it. And, uh, and, and prayed for it to relent. And the Lord said it wouldn't be so. And uh, so, one, we know that the Lord, of course, is merciful, even though the people deserve judgment. It's not a matter of God being mean. It's a matter of people being mean, okay? And you have to realize that if, if God is a holy God, he has to judge mean, wrong, sinful actions. All you got to do is keep reading why God was going to do that to them. They were, they were selling the poor people sorry food, and they were, they were cheating them on the weight of their money, and they were cheating them in the scales of on how much, I mean, they were, they were people that deserve judgment, guys. We have to realize that. Whenever we talk about the judgment of God, don't, don't, don't start apologizing for God's judgment. In fact, just to keep quoting my Amos, God says, I stand there with a plumb line in my hand. God, God, in other words, come over here and see if I'm square or not. Come over here and see if it's straight or not. God says, here's the plumb line. Here's the level. Okay? You know, I don't know how many times we'll be building something. There's always some know-it-all. And every, and every, if you get five guys together that don't work together on a normal basis, working on something, there's always some know-it-all at it. If you're building something, that know-it-all always thinks everything's not level. And <laughs> I learned a long time ago, talk to people like that, they go, that ain't level, you slap a level on it. And then they'll shut up because that bubble don't lie. Well, that's what God says. Well, come look what I'm doing. I'm doing the right thing, okay? A holy God has to judge, guys. There's a lot of sin in this world. 
people have been hurt. People are people are done wrong all the time. There's got to be a holy God that's going to square that up one day. Now he's willing to cover it on, at, at the blood under the blood of Calvary, or you're going to wear it on your own head. There's just no ways around. You're not getting around it. You're dealing with a God that has eternity in his hands, and he's got eternity to deal with you. Just because he's letting you go for a few months or a few years or, or a lifetime of crime and sin or whatever kind of despicable thing you might be doing, I don't know why you'd be listening to this, but maybe you are. It's coming around. You can't, you can't, you can't outrun him. You can't outlast him. And his word's going to endure, and his word's right. It's true. He says, here's that plumb line. You can look at it. But people were going to get what they deserved, and there was God's man. He was standing there. He was begging for the people. And, uh, you know, really, brothers and sisters in Christ, it's what we better get to doing for our country. I'm going to tell you something, um, and I don't mean to sound hard or harsh or anything this morning. Um, the church, I ain't worried, I mean, yeah, I'm worried about the culture and the country and all that, but I'm going to tell you something, guys. The culture, the country ain't going to turn until the church turns. Let judgment begin at the house of God, the Bible says. And that, that's the problem. Any idiot can see the country's going the wrong way. The culture is veered completely off the path. Don't even make it. Don't even stop. right and wrong. I mean, Lord, it don't even make sense the direction it's going right now. Any idiot can see it. But the, the big question is: is why hasn't the church? Why isn't the church seeing it? I think we've I think we've gotten so used to running our little show <clears throat> and having our crowds. And having the people that matter to us, we got churches that run around us four no more. We got some churches running around trying to do anything they can to just you know have have twenty thousand people. Don't matter what we say. Now don't get me wrong. There's good churches that are little. There's good churches that are big. I'm just saying. I think all of us would agree. Like the Book of Revelation, there ain't but probably two out of the, two out of seven churches that are uh, commendable. Said, but Todd, what does that say about church you pastor? What does it say about us, those of y'all that are at victory? Us at victory. We better make sure we're one of them two churches. One of the ways we can do it is be standing in the gap like Amos was. One of the ways we can do it is be faithful in declaring the word of God. You just keep reading there in Amos chapter 7, guys, and you'll see that God threw down one last vision for old Amos and uh, trying to, you know, remember everything off the top of my head how the order went. What was that guy's name? Amaziah was priest. Religious people always give you the biggest problem, by the way. And uh, he went to the king and said, man, the land can't endure Amos's words. Amos broke down the same set of words, and you go read it in Amos chapter 7 yourself. It's a pretty hard thing, thing of Amos said was going to happen to Amaziah's family and to him and all that, and that's all that, that's all that happened, by the way. But anyway, um, you, you're going to have you. we got to be standing in the gap. It's getting harder and harder and harder for people to want to hear the word of God. We better be found faithful with it. Uh, pray today. You fasting about, reading about, there and praying about here. If you go to victory today, you know we try to fast again. I always say if you if you can't medically and those kinds of things, uh, man, just pray. Just make sure you pray. But we're praying for this. Praying for people to be saved, praying for this COVID-19 thing to break, cope, praying that we can get back in worship services together. And uh, But while you're doing it, be reading your Bible and look for a word. And uh, and then be faithful with that word, whether it's to pray that word uh, or if you run into somebody and the conversation veers that way and you've got that opportunity to share that word or to keep talking about something that don't matter, then be faithful to share that word. They may hear, they may not. I don't know that the land is gone right now where it, the famine is here and they can't hear because they're not running around looking for it yet. But I'm telling you, the way everybody's living right now, the day, day's going to come in our land, in America anyway, where if if God gives us any grace at all, we're going to start looking for something that's real. And we're going we're gonna to recognize that uh, this temporary, fake, uh, nonsensical way of living uh, has got to come to an end. It just has no value to it. I don't know if it will or it won't. Most empires don't. Most 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 times in history, they don't get it. God lets that toe fall off the statue, as it were, and you would come to the next one. If you don't know what I'm talking about, we we'll go read your Bible. Anyhow, I hope and I pray that God gives you a good day today, and I hope that really at the end of the day, something of great spiritual con consequence has happened in your life, 
and maybe in somebody's life that you come in contact with. Amen. These are hard times, but I'll tell you right now, guys, God can use them, and it may take it for us to really come to a point of being found faithful. To be found faithful in difficult times is the mark of every great spiritual giant, and I hope that's exactly what you become. Have a great day. God bless you. Bye-bye.